Okay, so today I want to talk about um, something involved with travel, expat life. I talk a lot about health, but another passion of mine is traveling, learning languages, and living in a different country, which I have experienced in traveling Southeast Asia, especially living for a long term, almost three years in Vietnam, and now I've been almost nine months in South America in the country of Ecuador. So I want to compare both areas because a lot of the expats that I have seen in South America also want to go to Asia and vice versa. I've met a lot of expats in Asia that have already lived in South America and I want to talk about my perspective from both regions. So both continents, South America and Asia, I haven't really traveled to countries like China, Japan, Korea only for layovers. I'm more of a tropical type of girl, so I like the tropical fruits. So I'm going to be talking from that perspective. So just remember that this is my own um, perspective and it's going to be different from any experience that you have. So a lot of people ask me about my experience in Vietnam. They plan to go there, they want to get the down low, and it's good to get people's opinions, but at the same time, your experience and your life is your own. It's going to be completely different wherever you go, who you are, the times change, people change, you change, everything like that. But anyway, let's get started with the cost of living. So a lot of people like to live abroad because it's typically cheaper than your average developed Western country. So I was living in downtown Chicago and the rent was at least $1,000 a month. There was one time I was splitting the apartment with four other people. We each had our own bedroom, but we were sharing a tiny kitchen and a living room with a tiny couch, and that was upwards of $1,000. Um, comparing that to Vietnam, it really depends again on where you're living. If you want a really nice place, if you want to spend $1,000, even $2,000, you can. If you want to live in a sky rise in the middle of the city, in District 1 in Saigon, you can do that. Or if you want to live in a luxury beach resort, you can also spend a lot of money. But you can get a nice villa on the beach for only about three, four hundred dollars a month. I was paying only a few hundred dollars a month, but this was during COVID season, so there weren't a lot of travelers, and so the prices were dropping. Compared to South America, you can also find something pretty good for that price. So we have found entire houses here with two bedrooms, kitchen for about three, four hundred dollars. If you get more away from the city center, it's going to be cheaper. And obviously, in places where there's less foreigners, less expats, it's going to be even cheaper. And so again, this isn't all of South America. This isn't all of Southeast Asia. This is where I have been in Vietnam and where I have been in South America, which is Ecuador. And I don't want to say exactly where I am in Ecuador because there's already too many people coming here. <laughs> That's another problem with expat life is that all of these rich, wealthy Westerners go gentrify someplace and then it blows up the prices. Think about Bali. These people are not your servants. This is their hometown. So if you want to go there, travel, enjoy, respect the land, that's great. Please don't capitalize off of it. Anyway, back to my topic. The cost of living is pretty comparable from Vietnam to Ecuador. Both are very affordable places to live. Uh, the fruit is actually a bit cheaper in Vietnam, um, but you can typically find it more organic. There's a lot of organic shops in Vietnam though, and where I live right now in Ecuador, there's a lot of organic shops too. For example, I can get 15 bananas for $1.00. And sometimes that's even cheaper the farther we, we go. So if we go on a trip and we're on the bus and we stop in some random location, we can get stuff for really, really cheap. When things are out of season, obviously they're going to be more expensive. Watermelon are more expensive here versus Vietnam. It also depends on what's in season. So Vietnam is unparalleled when talking about tropical fruits, even vegetables. So they have a lot of stuff in abundance. And I would say Vietnam wins for affordability. But it's rapidly developing, so I think in the next few years, things could change. Okay, next topic is food. So a lot of people are in love with food, going to Asia for the food. Thai food is really amazing. 
Um, a lot of people love Vietnamese food. Vietnamese restaurants are all around the world. So I would say, again, Vietnamese wins when it comes to food if we're talking about your average food. Like your average, if, you're, if you don't have any dietary restrictions, if you're on no specific healthy lifestyle, if you're just looking at local street food, I would say Vietnam definitely wins because they have pho, they have boon, noodles, they have all of these different things. They have spring rolls. If you're a vegetarian, you can easily find food there. So if you're a vegan vegetarian, you can easily go to restaurants in Vietnam. There are so many buffets for only like one or two dollars that you can eat as much as you want. And they're all over the place because um, there are a lot of Buddhists in Vietnam. And so at least two days out of every month, the majority of people are eating vegan. And so that is a really big plus. Um, for me, I eat mostly raw. I eat a lot of fruit, and so it's not really that big of a deal to me if a place has good restaurants, although sometimes I like to eat stuff like that, so I liked being in Vietnam for that reason, and if I had friends, it was kind of a good middle ground. Okay, you guys eat meat usually, and I eat fruit, so let's have a middle ground and go to a vegan restaurant, right? I would say in Ecuador, South America, I can't say as a whole, but in general, in South America, they eat a lot of meat, and in Ecuador, I don't want to say anything bad about a country, but the food is not very good here. It's mostly like pork, a lot of fried stuff, it's not healthy, um, lots of fried potatoes. Um, there are some rice and bean dishes and plantains, which can be nice. But the restaurants I've found here are not really my favorite. The local restaurants, I've literally never eaten in one. I know when you travel, you should like explore, but it's really not my thing. I know how I'm going to feel after it. They're not really using high quality ingredients. The restaurants that I have gone to that are vegetarian are run by like people from Venezuela or Colombia, and they're bringing like arepas or like empanadas. Here, actually, they have tamales and humitas, which a lot of people like, and they're really cheap. They're sold on the street, but there's not as much street food as Vietnam, and there's not a lot of street vendors selling fruit on the street like Vietnam. I've only seen street vendors on the street selling fruit. Well, I have. They're in cities, and then in the middle, going from city to city, like in the countryside where nobody lives, there's stands of watermelon and coconuts, but if you're on a bus with 50 other people, you can't necessarily tell them to stop. Whereas Vietnam, a lot of people travel by motorbike, you can literally stop wherever you want and get fruit. So that's a big reason why I love Vietnam. Um, so cost of living, food, let's talk about the people. First, let's talk about the expats that you're going to meet in both. So if you're trying to go to another country and immerse yourself in the culture, that's amazing. That is what I did. So I mostly had Vietnamese friends, but really you might get lonely and so you want people that are also like you same minded same culture and you want other westerners and this is typically what i see in expat zones they create like a bubble of expats and they basically create their own country in that place which i'm not saying that's good or bad people chinese people do that they have chinatown in a lot of different countries and that's great it's bringing their culture there um with that being said it was easier for me to find like-minded Western friends in South America. I feel like people come here as kind of a journey, some spiritual journey, some as a journey for health. They want to be close to nature. I'm literally living in the mountains. You can do that in Southeast Asia too. There are a lot of nature lovers in Asia and a lot of fruit lovers, but mostly in Thailand. I found more of a conscious community in Thailand. It was harder for me to find that in Vietnam. I feel a lot of Southeast Asian expats, Westerners living in Southeast Asia, they're either more business-minded um, about kind of capitalizing off of that country or the people that are around my age in their 20s or really early 30s. There are people that want to kind of extend their fraternity college drinking years and they're partying all the time and they're kind of taking advantage of the low cost of living in Southeast Asia. So Southeast Asia is kind of a big party zone, unfortunately, in a lot of places. But of course, you're going to attract the people that are like you. You're going to meet like-minded people if you want to, but it was kind of an obstacle for me times and in certain areas if there was already that stereotype about expats and I was trying to make friends with local people they might not be interested and so I felt in South America there are typically more people that are respecting the culture and the land and that was easier for me so I would say South America 
and Ecuador in general wins. Obviously, there are good and bad people everywhere. There are alcoholics in Ecuador too, retired Americans just wanting to drink all day, every day. You're going to see that anywhere. So again, not to generalize, but I just want to share my experience. Um, okay, local people. I have found... Vietnam wins for this one. I'm sorry if any Ecuadorians are watching this, but this is probably because I spent so much time investing in the language and the culture in Vietnam, but I felt um, they were a bit more open-minded to Westerners, which obviously if people are skeptical of Westerners, that's fine, especially um, considering the history of colonization. But I felt here I don't even have really any local friends. I have local people that I talk to that are like shop owners that I can talk to for an hour or so. But none that I would that I have really invited over. Um, and that's maybe because I'm spending more time with like-minded communities doing other things. And that's also because I have a baby right now. And I'm trying to meet other people with babies, trying to raise the baby the same way. And so again, this is like a big difference. When I was in Vietnam, I was a single young woman. And when I'm in Ecuador, I was either very pregnant or having a very small baby. And so this is going to change depending on you as well. Um, when we went to the beach, the people were totally different. Um, the local people were more outgoing. And then the expat community, they were more into drinking, it seemed, and surfing. And less into like meditation and nature. But again... Everywhere is going to be different. Um, this also goes into work life. And I would say it's easier to make more money in Asia. You can get an English teaching job pretty easily. You can make like $20, $30 an hour over there. Compared to South America, you can make like $4 an hour. Sometimes for a whole day, you would make 20 bucks. So South America, especially Ecuador, isn't necessarily the place to come to make money. It could be a place if you are working online as a digital nomad, or you already have money, or you're retiring. Um, for me, work wasn't my main priority. It was more so being in nature and raising my baby and having a natural birth. And so Vietnam especially is developing rapidly and there are even other opportunities other than uh, teaching English. You can open restaurants, you can sell things, lots like that. Um, but here there are also restaurants with foreigners like Indian and things like that, but I would say the restaurant scene in Vietnam is raising more. There is also hospitality and opportunities to be in business. Um, this goes into language. So language is another really, 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 really important thing. It's kind of isolating if you're living in another country and you can't even talk to the local people. So obviously if you're an English speaker watching this video, it's going to be easier for you to live in South America and to learn Spanish. There are a lot of words in Spanish that are the same as English. There are basically no words in Vietnamese that are the same as English, unless they don't have a word for that, and then they say it as the English word. Like, oh my god, is oh my god. And, uh, I'm trying to think of other ones, but there are some French words that are similar to Vietnamese, but, again, Vietnamese is going to take you a really long time, but you're going to feel even better when you can speak it, because you're like, wow, I got through that challenge, and I can talk to people, and Vietnamese is such a beautiful language, but I also think Spanish is a beautiful language. It's very romantic and fun, whereas Vietnamese, there's a lot of rules to it, but it's also very poetic. And so if you want to communicate to the local people and you're not going to be there for a long time, then maybe South America is for you if you have to choose. But if you're dedicated and you want to stay there for years, then maybe it's time you pick up an Asian tonal language. Okay, the last but not least I want to talk about is culture. And so both places, South America and Asia, have a very different culture than Western countries like the U.S., Canada, England, Australia. Um, I would say both Ecuador and Vietnam are more conservative and more reserved um, as far as like dress and things like that and gestures. This is going to change dramatically based on where you are in these countries, in the north, in the middle, in the south of Vietnam. It's totally different. Older people, younger people, totally different. Education levels, totally different. Same as Ecuador. I noticed uh, the culture in the mountains is definitely more conservative, reserved. Everyone's saying hi to you, though. They're saying, hola, buenos dias, buenos tardes. Um, in Vietnam, you're not necessarily going to get that. They might not say hi to you as a foreigner. They might be skeptical of you. They might be 
nervous or shy or scared in the city, they might come up and talk to you and want to speak English. Um, no one is really speaking English to me here. No one has really done that here. If they're local, they're speaking in Spanish. And that goes back to language, which is what I appreciate about it here. They really hold their culture close to them. And Vietnamese people do that too, but they want to learn English more and they're becoming more westernized, I feel. But the culture is a little bit more opposite in Vietnam if you really understand their culture and learn their language. I would say it might be easier to adjust to the culture if you're in South America because it's a little bit more similar and again the language is more similar. Um, there's a lot of things in Vietnamese or Vietnamese culture that you wouldn't even think about that you learn that you're like, oh wow, I didn't even know that was a thing. And obviously you're going to get that in any other country, but I would say as a whole, Vietnamese culture is more different. But it's also beautiful and diverse. There are so many amazing temples if you want to learn about Buddhism, if you want to go take cultural trips. I would say Vietnam is the place for that. If you're looking for difference, I would say Vietnam wins. If you're looking to assimilate more, then maybe Ecuador. They have maybe similar cultural conditioning. If you are religious, there's a lot of churches here. But if you're looking for something different, then Vietnam is going to be it for you. Okay, I hope this video helps if you're looking to escape the Western world, then there are a lot of options for you. If you have any other questions, just let me know. I'm still exploring this country. I hope to be back in Asia at some point, especially Vietnam, because I really feel like that's where my heart is. Um, but I love South America too, and I feel like there's a lot to explore. And again, going back to nature, let's one more nature. Both places are beautiful, both have a lot of diversity, mountains, beach, you can get at both places, rivers, valleys, flatland. However, I would say that they're maintaining nature more in South America, so I say Ecuador wins with that, and Vietnam is more susceptible to development and being bought out by these big companies that are totally transforming nature and cutting down trees and things like that. But again, both places are beautiful if you're looking to live closer to nature. Okay, see you next time.